Hey, this is Shane. Welcome to video two on uh, how to build a 3D level using uh, in Unity using Dungeon Level Builder. Now, one thing uh, I'm going to have to get off uh, and explain right at the start is that uh, this asset was created with the working name Dungeon Level Designer. And uh, after I had created it completely, and was about to upload it to the Unity Asset Store, I realized that there was another asset with the same name. So I changed the name to Dungeon Level Builder. Now, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to go and uh, change the name all over the place. So you're going to see a lot of Dungeon Level Designer uh, name. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see that name a lot in this project. and. Uh, I will eventually get down to changing the name fully through through the documentation and uh, the code and whatnot. But uh, the name change does not affect the functionality of, of, the, of the asset, so it should still function exactly the same. And uh, everything uh, you see here will still be applicable once the name has fully been changed. Um, so the first thing you wanna, uh, you're going to want to do when uh, uh, you're creating uh, a level or at least what we're going to do here is create an empty unity project and import uh, dungeon level builder uh, into the project which is what I've done uh, I did this beforehand because my computer with the screen recording and all of that takes uh, a little bit of time to uh, uh, for my unity projects to to import so after that uh, uh, we're gonna have a scene with uh, our main camera and directional light uh, let's start so the first thing you want to you're going to want to do is grab the level manager prefab from the prefabs folder and drag it onto the scene now the level manager uh, contains um, your basic uh, uh, variables to initialize um, what you're going to need in terms of a level. Now, it comes with, uh, a, it's going to need a level builder script attached, and the moment you uh, you pull it in, it will attach a level builder script. And the one that's attached to, to the default prefab is level builder 01, which uses uh, the dungeon building algorithm found in uh, the game Tiny Keep, uh, a similar algorithm. And uh, uh, that's how it creates the levels. Now, what you see over here is uh, a space for the level theme file. Uh, you've got uh, an integer value for the seed of the level, uh, the size, a float value for the size of the tile in the x and the y um, axis, and then uh, variables for the number of rooms, the minimum room size, uh, the maximum room size, the percentage of main rooms. Now. Um, the algorithm that I use to, to build this level has uh, uh, the ability to give me two different types of rooms. Basically, rooms over a certain size are marked off as main rooms, and rooms below that certain size are marked off as standard rooms. Now, uh, this is useful in certain cases where I'd like to have uh, s some rooms have a particular style and other rooms have a different style. So. Uh, so over here, this percentage of main rooms says that 40% of the rooms in the level will be main rooms. Uh, now, you have the slider here which says percentage obstacles. Now, uh, in my level uh, generation algorithm, I have uh, an obstacle generation algorithm as well. Um, and what you generally see in most uh, level procedurally level uh, procedural level generation algorithms is that uh, the obstacles are sprinkled all around the level now uh, in some cases that might actually be desirable and, and more realistic but uh, in certain situations you might find uh, your player spawns in a certain location and can't access other parts of the level because uh, it's been blocked off by obstacles um, the obstacle generation code that we find in uh, the level builder 01, uh, I would say the, the, the first, the default uh, level builder that comes with, uh, with dungeon level builder, uh, has uh, uh, an obstacle generation algorithm which places obstacles in such a way that they never actually impede 
uh, the player from reaching any other part of the level. So um, this percentage obstacles tells me that, uh, uh, ask me what percentage of uh, each room would I like to fill with obstacles. Now I have it uh, generally at around 40%. And um, of those obstacles, certain obstacles can be marked off as temporary obstacles. Now we're talking about obstacles that can be broken or if your code, game code, so uh, is, is programmed so you could have obstacles that can be moved. Now I don't have obstacles that can be moved. Generally, uh, the games I programmed have obstacles that can be broken. So uh, I, I mark those off as temporary obstacles. And now I've said 50% uh, of the obstacles generated will be marked off as temporary obstacles. So that's, those are those two sliders there. And then you have a percentage cyclical now this uh, slider dictates how connected your dungeon actually is. Now if you turn it to 100%, uh, rooms will generally have uh, more than one corridor connecting to them, meaning that uh, you can enter the room from multiple different directions. Now this is useful in situations where you have, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, a first person shooter map where you don't want to give uh, the player any advantage uh, in a particular room. And if there was just one entrance, the player could possibly get to uh, a corner of the room and, and point their gun at that entrance and make sure that no one can, can get to them. So that's what percentage cyclical means. Uh, the, the option below that, protect outer edges of the room, that ties into the obstacle generation code. And uh, if that option is checked, uh, the outer edges of every room are not going to have any obstacles on them. The obstacle generation code will take uh, the center of the room and generate obstacles within that uh, area. Now, this is useful for situations where, like recently, I had to create a level with uh, beds and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, different stuff by, by the walls. And I didn't want obstacles to also be created next to the walls and, and intersect with the beds. I could have done this differently, but I just made sure I had an algorithm in there to, to protect the out, outer edges of rooms. So if I wanted, I could make sure that I, I know for a fact that the edges of the rooms would not have obstacles. So uh, the 2D mode is, as you would guess, uh, is for when you want your levels to be in 2D. And uh, Dungeon Level Builder comes with uh, a demo, a 2D demo that shows you how you can create 2D levels. Uh, that's not what, uh, what we're going to be covering in these tutorials. That will be something I cover in further tutorials uh, down the line. Now, the events that you have over here are events that are called when uh, the level generation is complete uh, and when the level is generated. Uh, when the level layout generation is complete, uh, sorry, and when the level is generated. Now, the layout generation is when... Uh, the builder actually uh, comes up with uh, the layout for the level. Now, uh, in order to understand that better, you have to think about uh, um, the levels being built in, in two stages. So the level builder builds uh, the layout first, and it sends the layout to the visual uh, generation part of uh, dungeon level builder. Now, uh, this event is triggered after that layout is complete and uh, you can use this to trigger information on the screen to make sure that uh, that the player doesn't wait for too long or doesn't get too uh, anxious as to why nothing's happening now this is generally not a problem because uh, uh, your level generation even on mobiles will take less than a uh, less than 0.5 of a second in total but if say if you have a really complicated level with a lot of different patterns and you know and you're stuck there for a second. You don't want your, your player to wonder if, if their game is stuck. So that, that helps in that situation. And then uh, uh, the second event is called when the, the level is completely generated, visuals and everything. And you can use this to uh, uh, make sure that uh, you take the blinds off the level, per se, and, and, and show, uh, uh, show your user the game. So... You have these two buttons down here, clear level and randomize seed. Now the randomize seed does what the name suggests. It randomizes the seed of the level. So if you wanted to uh, 
you you wanted to test your 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 logic your level building logic and make sure that uh, uh, you were not in the mood to enter a whole bunch of different integers you could just hit randomize seed and come up with a with a random seed to test now the build level option is not present over here and the reason for that is because we haven't specified uh, a level theme file so let's do that let's create a level theme file so go test test one create a folder for themes and right click and go create rope toolkit and level generator level theme and let's just leave it at that and now go to our level manager and drag this level theme on there and the moment we do that we get the option to build the level now by hitting build level nothing's actually going to happen because the level theme file is empty there isn't there's nothing to build so uh, at least there are no prefabs to attach so while the level is actually generated let's tag this over here uh, while the level is actually generated none of the prefabs are placed because there are no prefabs to place so first things first let's uh, attach let's clear this let's attach uh, a few flow tiles over here to see how we do that so we've got three different uh, types of flows that spawn automatically when you create uh, a new level theme file and uh, those are hallway flows main room flows and standard room flows and uh, if you uh, were paying attention earlier you'd understand the difference between main room flows and standard room flows and hallways are basically uh, your corridors so let's create some uh, flows for main and standard rooms let's add let's right click and add a game object node connect these up and find my flow tile over here so the art for I think it's ground yeah so the art for the samples are included and uh, you should have access to all of this uh, as you import uh, the asset so let's use this flow tile over here and now let's go back to our scene and hit build now what we should see is that somewhere around here we have okay we have one here and uh, it's being built it's just that uh, the level tiles are much smaller than uh, the 12 uh, units that we've specified over here so I think uh, the level tiles are 2x2 two two. let's try that and hit build and let's go have a look and let's go have a look losing the mouse wow Yeah, they are indeed 2x2. Two two. No, I think they're slightly bigger than 2x2. Two two. Now let's try... Oh, okay. That's a problem. Let's do 2x2 two two and build... Oh, let's try 4x4 four four and build. Alright. I think that should do it. Yeah. So the size of our tiles are four by four, and what we have right here is uh, we've got. If I can move up, we've got uh, our floor tiles defined where our rooms would be. Now you find uh, a hole over here and a hole over there, and uh, uh, I'm assuming, uh, I'm actually sure those are your entrance and exit tiles. So entrance and exit tiles are marked on the level as well. And uh, they're generally tiles that are furthest apart in the level. So uh, the algorithm makes sure that they're not close together. Uh, let's check out what happens when we connect our entrance up and we connect the exit up as well. 
and let's go back to the scene and build and those close up now um, we've got our room uh, our room flow tiles all set up let's add a little bit of variety here let's uh, let's make sure that these flow tiles can be one of two types so let's add another game object node in here and pick a different ground tile I think this is ground two uh, yeah so let's pick this ground tile so now we want uh, uh, the first ground tile that we created to be spawned the majority of the time, but uh, this ground tile to be spawned sometimes. So in order to do that, let's disconnect this and add uh, just an empty game object node over here and make sure that it connects to these two. And right now the probability that each tile spawns is one. Now, for some people, this number might be a bit confusing because you're thinking about probability from the range of 0 to 1 or, or 0 to 100. But the way Dungeon Level Builder deals with probability is uh, the summation probability, meaning that uh, if this tile has a probability of spawning, uh, if the probability of this tile spawning is 1 and the probability of this tile spawning is also 1, the actual probability of this tile spawning is 1 plus 1, uh, and that would be 50%, 1 out of 2. And so uh, when we talk about probability, we're talking about numbers compared to the entire sum of all the, the, the children attached to that particular node. So what we're looking at over here is a 50% chance that this tile spawns and a 50% chance that this tile spawns, uh, or a 1 is to 2 and a 1 is to 2 chance. So in order to make sure that this tile spawns the majority of the time, we'll say that uh, for every 10 of these tiles that spawn, one of this tile will be spawned. Now, we could have just gotten rid of this game object node this way and connected up the nodes like that and made sure, you know, that they spawned. It, w it would have the same effect, but uh, just to make it cleaner, I like this approach which is to create an empty game object node and then connect the children to that and then connect this to your parent nodes like that so so what we have so ba this basically acts as as a placeholder and uh, our probabilities will be the same over here so let's go back to our scene view and see what this does for us and I hit build and you see that uh, it's spawned those tiles. Now the probability over there is 1 is to 10. So we're good. We have some variety in there. And uh, let's spawn our, our hallway flows as well. And we'll add a game object node over there. And go find ground tile. And let's use this one for the hallway. Go back. Build, and we have our hallway tiles over here. Now, um, we have our entire levels, although my lighting is not great. So we have our ground tiles defined over here, and uh, you see the power of the visual theming system uh, that we have over here. Now, now suppose, for instance, we wanted some of these tiles to be spawned in the hallway as well. We could just connect that up over there. And uh, the probability over there is 1 is to 1. Say, again, we wanted, say, for every 5 of these tiles, one of that tile to be spawned. So we come down here and change this guy to, if I can actually select change this to, doesn't want to be changed. That's interesting. To a five, we're good. My keyboard is malfunctioning, and now we build. And we're going to have a few of these black tiles appear in the hallways. So we've got our rooms and hallways built. Let's add a few walls uh, in there. Let's actually take care of the wall in the next video. I feel like this video has already gotten a little long. So to the next video.